I'm working with the Intertribal Buffalo Council, which is a federally chartered organization. It's a collective of 67 sovereign nations across the country. And as a technical services provider for that organization, we are trying to develop training to bring out to tribes that they can establish in their workplaces with their tribal buffalo programs. Our most dangerous activity that buffalo workers usually do is the buffalo roundup that occurs once a year. And that is where the buffaloes need to be moved through a chute or some kind of corral system and then that way they can get the veterinary services that they need or also be sent off to different locations and the workers there are mainly doing their jobs outdoors in the elements and usually in the summer and fall so they can be exposed to thunderstorms or snowstorms depending on where they are located or just very um, high heat and drought conditions. And so just the main health issues for that are staying hydrated, making sure people are able to properly lift heavy items, and then also those areas of the Buffalo Roundup have really dusty situations, high noises due to the clashing of the metal facility, and then also just dealing with such a big animal can be very dangerous. Most of these animals may have never been handled, they're still pretty wild. Worker health and safety is very important because it's been a traditional value since the beginning of time, I believe, for our people. Back when we were really intact communities, it was a place where everyone took care of each other, everyone had a job in their community, and that way they could really thrive and maintain the health of everyone in that, that system. And so I think it's a traditional value um, of why health and safety is so important that has really adapted and evolved over time into our current jobs, just working within the American society and those systems. And I think we do our best to improve working standards and also keep our traditional values intact. In our organization, we have Buffalo programs across the country and we've created a tailgate safety manual that could be handed to a buffalo manager or an environmental program services administrator of the tribe and then that way they are able to go through a quick checklist of safety procedures before they go through whatever activity they may be doing if it's a health checkup surveying the lands or doing the buffalo roundup We'd also like to provide in-person training at our annual membership meeting, and that's held once a year. And so that gives a chance to all of our member tribes to really provide what kind of challenges they are facing in the work environment with health and safety. And we can apply some tools and do our best to provide solutions for what they're facing in their communities. When you have a person showing up day to day and their healthy attitude and in a safe manner, they can bring good back into the community. And I think that can only happen if the workplace fosters a really safe, welcoming, and healthy community. I also think that some of the things I've heard from other tribes, such as compliance plans um, and inspection, and then also NIOSH is doing the HHE, which I think will be really helpful for us to utilize some of those resources out there. I'm really proud to work for Inner Travel Buffalo Council because it is bringing a traditional food source back into the Native American community. It is really restoring something that has been lost and really connects us back to our past.